Hello, today I would like to present you this MPPT solar inverter from a company called Green Cell. And I do apologize because that's going to be extremely quick video. And that's because I need to mount it as soon as possible into real location. And I was just walking myself through the user manual and configuring it for lithium iron phosphate battery. And it is 200 amp hour and that translates to over two and a half kilowatt hour. So we've got pretty decent amount of capacity. This inverter I would compare to Victron Energy Compact Multi Plus, but it is a little bit improvement because it's contained built inside MPPT charger, which of course the Victron Energy do not have. So I've got everything that I need in that small form factor. In my use case, it's going to be acting as uninterruptible power supplies, providing emergency power for sensitive load with conjunction with that beefy battery, but also we've got gas generator, but we don't want to power that sensitive load straight out from gas generator because the voltage can fluctuate, the frequency can be drifting, a lot of things can happen and we don't want that. So the idea is that we are going to be grabbing 230 volt AC from the gas generator, converting it to DC and using MPPT charger, we are going to be pushing it to battery and to the inverter. So no matter what's going to be happening, we are going always getting through pure sine wave. No matter if the gas generator is going to be failing, if it's going to be turning off for refueling. And yes, I know there are double conversion and interruptible power supplies, but they are mostly rack mount and they are using higher voltage. So creating like a 36 volt battery bank or 48 volt is going to be problematic. Design is very similar to the Victron Energy Multi Plus. It's got this beautiful metal chassis. Here you've got all the specification. We've got our master switch that is of course a soft switch it's going to be just sending signal from bottom we've got connector for the pv and that's going to be our dc mppt input we've got those beefy connector for dc in and dc out so you are going to be hooking up your battery here and over there we've got connector for attaching input and output for AC. On top, we've got AC out, and on bottom, we've got the AC in from our grid. We've got input breaker, and we've got two fans that are designed to be thermal control. I hear them spinning in different rate, so it's definitely measuring temp inside. If we lift that panel, I'm not sure if you can see, but we've got a DC battery fuse inside. So it is extremely nice just in case you will ever get any problem with running it from the battery. That fuse is going to be first thing to check and you are going to be lifting that up to screw the terminals. I will just put it like this to make sure we've got a good airflow. With this set, we also have got that protector that go here around the AC terminal block. We also get the USB cable because that device can be attached to computer. As you can see, we've got a communication port and I believe it can talk to like BMS. For this configuration that I've got on my bench, as you can see, I didn't attach protective earth and that's because I'm using isolation transformer. This power supply is going to emulate our solar input and this is similar device that is going to be used in real condition but we are going of course using industrial power supply because this is my lab bench. 
and we are going to try to power it on. We are going to start our inverter by use of the side switch and it will go through the boot up process. As you can see, we do not have a load being power. It's booting up and we're waiting for that green LED indicating AC inverter. And here you can see what's going on on the screen. So let's give it a moment. And as you can see, the power is being provided to the output and it goes straight through that battery. We do not have grid attached. So let me grab our clamp meter. And of course, this is just a test. I will put a bigger load, but you can nicely see it. And we are going to be measuring the DC. And we currently pull from battery 3.3 amp. And here is your idle current when the load is disconnected. Okay, let me power it back. I will attach our AC from grid and you can observe how the built-in transfer switch will connect grid into the output instead of built-in inverter. So I'm doing it. Grid is on, we are waiting for it being detected and for click of our relay. So give it a moment. We hear click. You can see the amperage is going in reverse and we are currently pushing almost 15 amp into that beefy battery. So we are being power from the grid and we are recharging our battery. And here we are going to be simulating power outage and I will disconnect our grid. There was a tiny blink and now the inverter is working. We are pulling power from battery. In my use case, in that condition where the battery is going to be low, we are going to be starting our gas generator and it's going to be feeding power supply. So let's do that. The gas generator is started and we are powering our industrial power supply. Here you will be able to see we've got set for 22 volts and the MPPT should kick in and we should start seeing current being nicely slowly increased by the MPPT controller. And you can see we are rising. It should be sensing how much current it could safely pull. And we hit the 30 amp limit because this is 30 amp power supply. And we are nicely jumping between CC and CV. So if there will be any change, it will optimize to not drag down the power supply rail. So it's working absolutely beautiful. And as you can see, now we are pushing almost 40 amp into our battery while still powering our load. So now we are charging battery. We are powering load from that two DC wires. If there will be any problem, if we need to turn off the gas generator, absolutely nothing is happening. We are still building power, we just reverse the current flow. So as you can see, it's working absolutely beautiful. And in case the grid came in, we can repeat our test. It should be detected in a moment. And we are going to be nicely transferred the grid. And everything is working as it should be. We hear the click and we are going to be recharging. And as you can see, we are sending current into the battery. Absolutely beautiful. I fully understand that my use case is extremely specific and most likely you are not going to be using same thing that I did, but this is how great the device is and how much you can configure it. So first thing that I did I select the option called 01 to provide 
utility as the priority. So always when there will be AC at the input side, we are going to be using the built-in transfer switch to send it to the load. And this is what I want as a UPS operation. And of course, if that's going to be your solar system, then you can select the different mode. Second, you can select the voltages and I go with the UPS because I want it to be start working in case the power from the grid will fluctuate. So it will just go into the inverter. So I go with the UPS mode. For my unintended operation, I select the auto restart in case over current to automatic restart and I leave auto restart off in case of overheat because most likely if that's going to be happening then one of those fans is going to be broken so I don't want it to overheat, I want it to turn off. Here you can also select the charging source and if you've got like a, a real solar installation then you would like to be saving money but in my case I would like to recharge the battery as soon as possible from the AC and from the power supply so you can select this at the same time the PV and AC is going to be recharging battery and you've got a lot of different settings I was selecting the proper voltage for the lithium iron phosphate battery so you go with the lithium ion and you select the bulk and float voltages I copy that from the Victron energy manual and you can go with different option if you've got like a AGM or a lead acid battery you can recharge them when the sun is missing so they are not going to be sulfate and you can walk through that manual absolutely beautiful here I've got my hair dryer and as you can hear it's working nicely let's see at the display we are pulling over 300 watts which is totally fine let it jump we've got our voltages battery voltage let me disconnect our grid and now it go through the inverter and we are pulling from battery 26 amp and the hair dryer is working just fine and let's attach our generator and we are going to see what's going to happen because we should get still more power to recharge our battery so that negative sign should go into plus and we should be pushing a couple amp inside so let's give it a moment and as you can see we are running our hair dryer and the same time we are pushing 18 amp into battery absolutely beautiful so thank you very much for watching i hope you find it interesting see you next time and bye bye